Okay, so now for lesson four, we're getting into our movements and it's gonna involve switching our hips. So really useful motion. You want to keep, we can go with our hands on the floor or elbows on the floor, either one is fine. We'll go hands for now. Shoulder width apart, knee shoulder width apart. It's got a nice little box or table kind of look to it. I'm going to put one leg out. I'm gonna lift my hand off the floor and I sit through with my knee. So my knee is through, my toes are pointed. I'm not gonna pull my toes up and I'm not gonna kick them forward. Okay, that's gonna be a little bit later. If anytime I bring my foot forward, I don't want my foot on the floor. I want it up so it doesn't catch the mats or anything. So here, foot's out and sit through. And back to the same position. Foot's out, sit through. Back to the same position. Now I can go all the way through by going slide onto my back. And then I can sit up and slide back. So we're kind of getting into a little bit of movement movements so you've seen before, just like the safety stand up. So post, sit through, down, oh, sit up. Now instead of safety stand up, you're just back to this position, which is uh, not a great position for Jiu Jitsu, but it's one that you'll see fairly often, especially this, which we call a turtle. So you can practice from this position now, post, kick through, and back, post, kick through, and back. So that one is very, very useful. You'll see that one pretty consistently. Now we want to do the same thing, but backwards. And you know what? You already saw it. I'm going to bridge up onto my elbow and switch backwards. A reverse switch out. And it's just a backwards way. So if you can go there and back, well, you're already doing both switch outs. You got a switch out and a reverse switch out. So from here, down, up, and back. Here, down, up and back. So switch out and reverse switch out. Practice this one lots. Okay, getting right into the standing self-defense for this week is the shoulder grab. If someone grabs your shoulder, what you need to do. Now it's very, very similar to start as with the wrist grab. We want to base, and when John grabs, we don't base down. And that's a really common thing. It's not a huge mistake. You know what? Base is better than no base, but right now John can give a little pull and I'm gonna start losing my base. So it's really important. We start in close, John grabs, I step away in my base. So this arm's extended, now it's very natural. What would John do? Yes, he's gonna pull in. Maybe it's for a punch, so I have to keep my hand up. So I start close, he grabs my shoulder. You can see the grip right behind my shoulder here. I base away, hand is up, and this hand's up. So if John does throw a punch, I can hide behind my hands. When I feel that pull, I shoot in. Hands underneath. And right here, this is where I want to stop. I can take John down if I like. And it's not necessary at the beginning, but it's definitely a great idea. So I'm here to grab, step back, hands up, here. This is the part that's the tricky part that we're going to work on. Now, if John has his arm straight, it's very hard for me to bend his arm. It's almost like a straight arm bar. So by pulling away, you get him to pull. I step in, my hand goes down, and I want to punch. It's like I'm trying to punch his leg. That's going to help bend his arm a little bit. Hand goes down, and I find that little pocket of his elbow. My hand is underneath his elbow. So I don't want it over here. I want it in line with his elbow. Don't stand up. Because sometimes you get guys that are really flexible. They'll do a little pirouette and spin away, and now they might try to grab me or grab my leg. So we don't want to stand up all the way. What I want to do is keep the weight on his leg and have him bend a bit. So I'm here, step back, right here. Because this makes the push much easier. And one last little thing that you gotta watch out for is when you step in, don't step in front. Because right now, John's holding onto my knee, he can pull down and kick my leg, and knock me backwards. So I wanna make sure whenever I have an opportunity to, I'm stepping behind my partner. I can always trip him if I need to. But right here is the pressure. This is putting a joint lock on John. It's called an Americana. His arm is caught and you can feel it. If you just rotate your arm, you can feel a stretch in front of your shoulder. So again, we're close, you grab, face away, hands are up, in. And this is it. This is all we're looking for for right now. Don't have to get to the ground at all. Have fun. Okay, so for this week's lesson, it's a little bit more aggressive. I, I'm on my back, I have my guard, my legs are wrapped around John. 
and he's got his forearm on my neck. So you see this sometimes in an MMA fight, guys push and go back and punch, or they just might try to choke you with this forearm. So, right here, John's got his forearm on my throat, and he likely is re reinforcing it with his other hand. So one thing we're going to do is we're just going to turn sideways for a second, and this. John can put a lot of weight. Go ahead, John. He's putting that weight on my throat. If I push my hips up, well, you can hear I can talk a lot better. So I can stretch John out. Now, I don't have to squeeze my knees. I just want to push, extend my hips. Okay, so this is a super important part. Well, we'll move back this way. The next thing is I need to make sure my hands find their mark right away. So one hand is going on his shoulder, one hand is on his elbow. So when John starts to push, extend, hands to hand, I'm going to open my guard, and I'm going to push John to the side as I turn around. Okay, so I want to try and shoot myself out. It's not so much pushing John to the side. If he's a lot lighter than me, then that might work out. But if he's bigger than me, he's not going to move. I have to move sideways. So again, right here, I want to ride that weight and throw it away. Now, my head's in line with his head. I want to grab his armpit. My leg is on his back and I keep my knee beside his spine. I take my hand and I sit up onto my elbow. Grab his armpit, watch my foot here. I'm going to kick. John. Okay, so as this leg climbs over, I want to extend that, that left leg of mine. Leg comes in, and then I'm going to open my knees to flatten John out. Now that's where the fun comes in. So we're going to slide back a little bit for this part. Flatten John out, lift up his head, arms underneath, cut my hand in, and then choke him. Now I'm going to show you a detailed version of the choke in a moment. Oh, we're going to just watch this, uh, this escape one more time. Now, my foot slipped a little bit, and this is going to happen. If you have the choke, try to hang on to the choke. I do have a hook on this side. If I lost that hook as well, I would let go of the choke. And so you have to be mindful. And then you can get up and look into a better position. One more time. Now, let's get into that choke. So John's going to sit right in front of me here. And when we're choking, it's not about, uh, we don't want to strangle someone. It's not about applying a lot of force. It's applying very accurate pressure. So you guys know when you check your pulse, you feel it on one side, you feel it on another side. I'm going to feel John's pulse now. Now if I kept it there long enough, John will pass out. He'll just go to sleep. And there's nothing to worry about this. There's been, uh, the Japanese uh, society has had a lot of judo practitioners go and study this choke extensively for a couple decades. No injuries, no brain trauma, no seizures, nothing to worry about. The biggest injury that comes from people getting choked is when they go to sleep, the guy lets go, and they fall down, hit their head on something. So that's what we have to be mindful of. So that's why John's sitting, not kneeling. I'm going to put my arm around John. Put my elbow underneath his chin. Okay, so it's nice and deep. My bicep is on one side, form on the other side. Not this. This is a much nastier deadlier kind of choke. So we don't want to practice that one. I'm going to go nice and deep with my elbows underneath his chin. My hand's going to grab my shoulder. Other hand slides in. Head is down and I'm going to breathe in as I just have to squeeze my biceps a little bit. Now, I don't have to crush it. If I find I'm using a lot of strength, something's not quite lined up right. So if I'm over here, you can see my elbow's not quite in the right spot. This isn't going to work very well. One side is not getting choked. I need to make sure I get both sides. So again, deep, grab that shoulder, hand cuts behind, breathe in, and squeeze the arms as you go. Now, you have to be very mindful when you're practicing on a partner. Do it here at the school because there's lots of people that can watch you do it and tell you, like, oh, no, it's not working because you need to turn a little bit. So they can make those little modifications. We also have a very nice, wide open, safe, matted area, not like your house where well, you have a coffee table or hardwood floors or toys or other things that might be on the floor to hit yourself on. 
So be very, very mindful when you're doing this. You have to be uh, very aware of your environment and your partner. It takes a lot of sensitivity. Now I want to do that choke or the whole sequence one more time from the side so you can see how I'm flattening John out. So we'll go over here. There, that's quite unpleasant for him. I ease up with my training partners because it is quite annoying. Pull up his head, arm comes underneath. You see how my hips are in the air. Normally, it will be there. So we don't have to break our partner's back when we practice this move. We do want you to be familiar with the position, but be mindful for your partner, right? We want to make it realistic, yet not injure anyone, and have fun.